So, folks, what we have is a shocking statement from a federal judge, a shocking statement from a judge making it clear that by the plain language of the Constitution, Donald Trump is banned from office for the rest of his natural life. This judge has looked at the information and they've ruled that Donald Trump cannot run. That's this judge's view. And we're going to break it down as well as the views of other experts, because my goodness, guys, this is an incredibly important moment because a lot of progressive legal analysts and a lot of people have been saying that Donald Trump's a traitor basically and can't run anymore. But now you're seeing it from legal experts and one of the most prominent conservative jurists in the country. Hit the like and subscribe button as we track this incredibly important moment where this lawyer dropped this major announcement, excuse me, this judge dropped this major announcement that's sending shockwaves throughout the entire world. Let's start with a more progressive legal analyst that's partnered with this judge in this monumental announcement because it makes it clear that Donald Trump is not eligible. And what it will have to decide is what this language means. It's pretty obvious what it says. In fact, when it was written, Abraham Lincoln was no longer president. We had a president who didn't believe in the 14th Amendment, Andrew Jackson. They weren't going to rely on him and his Justice Department to decide who should be convicted of insurrection. That's beside the point. So it's important to see what happens in all of these 91 pending charges of crime against the former president. But whatever happens in those cases, this disqualification, like the disqualification of someone who was not a natural born citizen, or the disqualification of someone who doesn't meet the age limits, has got to be enforced according to its terms. For a very long time, Americans didn't take this seriously. But now the scholars have begun to look at it and as the judge says, I've looked at it for a long time, it's impossible to disregard. We have a former president who has proudly said that he would terminate the Constitution. That was his language. He would terminate it if necessary to hold on to power. How can he say that and take the oath to uphold the Constitution? Look, this is it's very important. It's very important to get this right. One of the things you're going to see throughout this video, and watch it till the very end, because there's something at the very end. There's one particular word, really two words, that when you hear, you will have a, a kind of transcendent moment. But what this really demonstrates is that the language is clear in the Constitution. It's not really up for debate. Donald Trump is not eligible. And here is this very conservative judge making that point again the language being clear the what what has brought our article forth uh is uh some magnificent scholarship by professors baud and and paulson uh that is forthcoming in a law review at, uh, from the university of pennsylvania uh they're monumentally important contribution uh that, that, that they have made uh, is that they have demonstrated that what might have been is not, which is to say this. Uh, Section 3 of the 14th Amendment means exactly what it plainly and clearly says, specifically, as you just read. Yeah. Any person who previously has taken the oath of office to support and defend the Constitution of the United States and who then engages in insurrection or rebellion against the United States and the Constitution of the United States uh, shall not thereafter uh, hold, uh, in this instance, the office of the Presidency of the United States. Uh, that language uh, in the Constitution, Jim, simply could not be any clearer. It is unmistakable in its application to the former president. The only thing that was not known until 
professors Baud and, and uh, Paulson did their uh, their scholarly work it, it is whether uh, this was the actual meaning under the original understanding of the Constitution. And the professors confirmed and demonstrated that indeed it was. Look, there are moments where constitutional language isn't clear. And there are moments where the Constitution is clear in its lack of clarity. Basically saying, you know, either it doesn't take a position on an issue or it suggests that the issue has to be dealt with through the legislative process, which basically means people got to hash it out politically. Here, it's really, really, really clear language. It's, it's, so, it's so clear, right? It's absolutely critically clear, right, that this is... Donald Trump not being able to run. And this is a federal judge. He's, you know, he, the guy, he's, you know, you're a judge for life. You know, uh, we still call Bill Clinton President Clinton. This is Judge Luddig ruling from his perch that Donald Trump is not eligible. And they do it again here. And they really, really re reiterate the simplicity of this argument. But I want to make one point after this. We're going to break this down a little bit more. There's, again, one critical section in a few minutes. That doesn't make sense unless you watch this part, but it will rock your world. So you could see, right? One of the things they're really mentioning there is that this this is a this is such a clear cut moment. Literally every time he's indicted uh, from becoming the president of the United States again. So I put it to you, Judge Ludig. You you have studied this. You have thought about this a lot. You are the man who with whom Mike Pence's lawyer consulted uh, before January 6th to make the determination that he was not in a position to overturn the Constitution uh, and count the, the wrong electoral uh, votes. How have you come to this conclusion? Thank you, Allie, for having uh, Professor Tribe and I on, on this morning. Um, Professor Tribe is the most celebrated constitutional mind in America, and he has been that for the past four decades at least. Professor Tribe has been studying the Constitution and even the disqualification clause literally his entire illustrious career. I first came to think seriously about the disqualification clause only in January of 2021, after that fateful day of January 6. Um, but at that time, I came to the same conclusion that Professor Tribe had come to many years before. And Professor Tribe and I have been discussing uh, this profound question uh, between us uh, privately for over the past two years. Uh, in some ways, the, the one of the most notable things that we say in the Atlantic article this morning is that uh, George Washington, America's very first president, presciently foresaw and anticipated this moment in American history almost 250 years ago in his farewell address. Turning to the, the merits of, of what we have explained uh, in this article, uh, constitutional analysis, Ali, is, as you well know, does not lend itself to, to sound bites. Uh, in this case, though, it does when coupled with the, the, the reading of, of this article that, that we, we've done this morning. Uh, and that soundbite is literally that the Constitution in Amendment 14, Section 3, forbids the former president from holding the office of the presidency again because of his uh, uh, conduct in and around January 6, 2021, and specifically uh, in his conduct that um, either uh, constituted an insurrection against the Constitution of the United States or a rebellion against the Constitution of the United States or aid and comfort to the insurrection or rebellion 
that occurred on that fateful day. Under the disqualification clause, the, the, the literal terms, the plain meaning, and now we know through the, uh, the, the, the magnificent research uh, of Professors Baud and, and, and Paulson, the original meaning of Section 3 disqualifies the former president from ever holding uh, the presidency again, Allie is self-executing, operating as an immediate disqualification from office without the need for additional action by Congress. And the clause itself says that Congress's only role in this clause is to remove it if they think it's not true. That means it's not necessary for Congress to act to disqualify Donald Trump as a presidential candidate. Is that how you read it? Uh, it is, Ali. The, the, that specific finding is perhaps the single most important conclusion uh, that was drawn by the professors from from their uh, scholarship, namely that, as Professor Tribe said, the clause is automatic. It is self-executing, which means that, as Professor Tribe just explained, uh, anyone state or federal, who's charged with listing the candidates for the presidency is obligated under the Constitution to make the decision himself or herself as to whether Donald Trump is qualified to be put on the ballot under the Constitution of the United States. Uh, the, as, to the, as to the role for Congress, Frankly, and to, until uh, this scholarship by, by the two professors, I was not uh, aware uh, of the self-executing feature of uh, Section 3. I'm sure Professor Tribe was. He's written a uh, thought and written about the uh, disqualification cause his whole life. But this is... This is of momentous significance itself because neither Congress nor Congress through impeachment nor a judicial order nor the results of a criminal conviction are needed as of this moment under the professor's reading of Again, when we've been dealing with Trump and all of his legal cases, right? Like, let's be real. Other than the documents case, which I feel is so cut and dry, right? Did he had documents that didn't belong to him. They give him a chance to give him back. He didn't. And he lied about it and lied to his lawyers and then hid the documents more and then tried to destroy evidence of him hiding the documents. That one, he's dead to rights. On all the other cases, while I do feel he's dead to rights guilty, personally, like issues of the First Amendment come up. Issues of like, what was his intent with the hush money? Was the hush money paid to uh, avoid political consequences? You know, with with the with the Rico case, there's going to be questions there about maybe not on all the criminal charges, but specifically to each one. Can you charge Donald Trump? for what his thugs on the ground in Georgia did. How much was he directly connected to the thugs in Georgia? And remember, it's, there's, there's the, the truth, but also proving it beyond a reasonable doubt. With this, it's very clear, and this gets to the core. As this judge rules from their opinion of analyzing the Constitution, it's immediate disqualifier is basically what he says. That it's not, it's not a, a long-running thing. You just, you get booted. It's like an immediate, clear-cut thing. And I think that really needs to be made clear to the American people that the Constitution is not ambiguous here. It is actually, more than usual in some cases, extremely explicit on what it's trying to say. And as I noted just a couple seconds ago, you have situations where in criminal court with some of Donald Trump's crimes, there will be real debate real legitimate debate about proving Donald Trump's guilt and where the First Amendment ends and Donald Trump's fascist coup begins. But one thing we do know is for sure, 
that according to a legal expert and according to the verbal rulings, and he's not a judge anymore on the bench, but the philosophical rulings of a leading conservative jurist, Donald Trump is banned from office.